everybody. Welcome back. Day one of the 21 convention, the men's conference of the century. All right, we did it. There you go. Uh, day one, everyone's spirit's still high. No droopy eyes yet. Uh, coming up next to the stage is an executive coach of RSD. Uh, his name's Brad Branson, and he's going to be talking on inner game, becoming the gorilla. He's going to explain that. Yeah. Hope you're, I hope you're set. I hope you're ready. And I hope you're wearing your brain condoms because you're about to get mind fucked. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Branson. Here he is. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, my name is Brad. I'm from Real Social Dynamics. I've been teaching with RSD for about three years now. Uh, it worked out perfectly. I want to thank Anthony for having me here. Um, I'm basically starting my Euro tour starting tomorrow in Copenhagen. I'm just here for a day. I got in yesterday. Uh, I've taught in 38 countries now, including once I get, I'm going to Ukraine and Portugal. Those are my 37, 38th countries. I've done Dubai, South Africa this year, a lot of Mexico, Canada, all that stuff. I got kicked out of Canada for a year, so I uh, can't go there for a while. I wish there was a cool story with that, but there isn't. Um, Kind of my background, 29, just turned 29. Uh, I got into this probably about five years ago. I actually took a boot camp as a client with RSD in 2007. My background story, I come from, uh, are, how many of you guys from like the area, England, London area? Who came in, the, who's the furthest away? Who came in from not Europe? Anyone? Where'd you come from? DC. DC, sweet. I was there a couple weeks ago. What is it, DuPont Circle? <laughs> yeah, it was Jeff, me, and uh, Tyler. We had a big ass boot camp. There's like nine dudes running around, nine students. Um, but yeah, so I'm from the Midwest of America. It's very uh, like Catholic and like when you're 22, you get married. So uh, following in my parents' footsteps, when they were like 14, they got together and then are still together. So when I was 16, I found my high school sweetheart and ended up staying with her for eight years. So basically my whole, uh, I was obviously like, you know, when you don't have to think about dating, you're basically completely unconscious to the whole aspect of it. And uh, I was completely oblivious because I'm like, I got my girl. I have nothing to worry about. So then when I was 25, uh, I went to school, got my uh, master's in microbiology. Obviously don't use that, except for kind of checking things. Every no, it's <laughs> on camera, yeah, sweet. Uh, hi, I know my, my girlfriend reads my blogs, so this will be great. Uh, anyways, uh, so then I was 25, that kind of ended, and uh, I was like, okay, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. How am I gonna find a girl? And that's how I kind of found out about the whole industry of uh, Cold approach and dating advice and all that stuff, which is why you guys are all here, right? Uh, I took my boot camp, like I said, in 2007, and about a year later was when I became an instructor with RSD. Uh, my main market's usually Chicago and New York, and uh, I've done Amsterdam a lot. I don't do London because Ozzy's here. Has anyone, has anyone taken a, a boot camp with RSD, by the way, in here? Sweet, fresh crowd. I like this. I gotta, I gotta perform now, make it good. All right, uh, so Anthony, when he asked me what my title was gonna be for my speech, I was like, I'll go with extreme inner game, be the gorilla, and now I guess I gotta talk about it. So actually it is like kind of what I'm known for. If, if I would pick out my own game, like what my style is, I would say it's pretty much purely entitlement. Entitlement game is what my game is. Um, actually, the reason why I guess I took the boot camp and all that stuff is because I didn't have entitlement, right? One of the easiest things is like, you know, when you see that girl that you feel entitled to, you feel like you could get her. Isn't it amazing how everything just seems to work out, right? Your tonality is great, your tone of voice. Uh, you, you don't, you're not quick to respond, you don't qualify yourself, everything is perfect, right? So uh, when I came into this, what it was was like in my own social circle, I could, I could get a girl, all right? You know, my friends would be like, hey, this is Brad, he's pretty cool, and it would go well. But it was like when you see that random girl on the other side of the room, it's like, well, how, how do you get her? How do you, like when you have all that cool shit going on, usually it's like guys that are here, it's like you made the conscious decision that you're gonna work on yourself, which is kind of like the top five to 10% of people anyways, right? Um, so you guys got a lot of shit going for you, but it's like, okay, how do I convey that to the stranger? Has anyone felt that before? Anyone, cool, no one shit, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so that's why, another reason why I took the boot camp. And again, like how to build more entitlement and how to convey that like attractive, cool dude from the very beginning. Um, so I start off when I do my, I, I do boot camps basically every weekend, probably almost four times a month, usually three times. Uh, <clears throat> different city every weekend I'm doing, like I said, Copenhagen, all over the damn place. Um, and the first question always is, um, what causes attraction in a girl, right? So let me get some crowd participation. Somebody give me a reason what, what attracts a girl. Somebody raise their hand. Anyone? 
Great. Yeah, I definitely think confidence. Oh, you said confidence. Yes, we don't have the microphone. Anyone else? Expression of the true self. What does that mean? Uh, just like you're talking uh, from your heart and uh, through all of the sort of you know, ego and that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. So you said expression of the true heart. I guess we could probably get the microphone going just for uh, uh, video stuff too. But no, I definitely agree. Um, other things? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll slow it down so everyone gets the mic here. Humor, fun personality. Cool. I agree with that as well. Um, anyone else? Deep and slow voice. Cool. What, okay, so he said deep and slow voice. Why? Why do you think that? Okay, cool. No, I totally agree. Um, for me, a lot of the reason when I got into kind of uh, learning about this stuff and the advice, dating advice, it seems like, and you know, you guys will have a lot of guys coming this weekend saying different things. So what well, you'll notice at times there's like a dissonance, right, where some people will say one thing and somebody will say something else, and you're like, how do these tie together? And the thing is, is on a certain like logical paradigm, everything does, like from a certain standpoint, oh, that does make sense. But my goal is to try to like distill it deep enough down where then you see everything and you're like, oh, okay, that's why he's saying that. That's why that works, right? And uh, for me to go completely uh, bare bones, my whole kind of the linchpin of what I talk about is really based on attraction equals value. <clears throat> so this isn't even really just related to like primal instinct and girls and all that stuff. What it is is just when I, well, like let's say right now, you know you guys have heard of Maslow's hierarchy where it's like you're like hunger and shelter and then self-actualization and girls is in the middle there and stuff. So if I'm up here and I'm like, yeah, girls, 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 yeah, whoa, attraction. And you're like, haven't eaten a meal in 10 days. You're like, I don't give a fuck what you're talking about, the girls shit. It's like, just give me a sandwich, right? So that has more value to you, so you're attracted to it. The same way as um, if I was like, yeah, and all of a sudden, well, I used to use Osama bin Laden, but he's dead now. So uh, like, like somebody, like a terrorist runs in here and tries to bomb the fucking place. Uh, I'm going to be like, yeah, value, the value. You guys are going to be like, or a tiger. We'll say a tiger runs in here. You're going to be running to the corner. So uh, what has value to a woman when we're dealing with attraction? The problem is, is that most guys have is that women and men are attracted to very different things. I always say, luckily, women aren't as superficial as men are, right? Because men were just like, I got, I got to be PC for the camera. So it's like, ooh, beautiful woman. Yeah. Normally, I'm a little more uh, derogatory than that. But uh, so like for girls, what, what attracts a girl? You guys said confidence, humor, those type of things. Those are all high value traits, right? So the goal, and when I talk about like become the gorilla, I guess that's my trademark for the day, is what, what am I saying with that? It's like the gorilla is one aspect of a high value guy. Some guys talk about like being alpha, like be really alpha. Um, and the distinction that I really like, which I think is uh, kind of when you hit like the novice, intermediate, getting some good results. A lot of guys come to me and they're like, I can get the sixes and sevens, but I want to get the eights and nines. That's a lot of guys that have on boot camp, or they're like even more crazy, and they're like, I can get with a girl once a month, but I want to do it once a week. Right, what's, what's the kind of that distinction? And I think one of the biggest things is uh, you have the alpha, I call it like the alpha wolf, and he's like, yeah, I'm alpha, look at me, oh, look at my high value shit, whoa. And then you have the like silverback gorilla, right? So he's like, uh, he's just as alpha, but it's like some shit happens, and he's just like, and all it takes is a face stare, and he's just like, that's what I thought. And he just chills back with his harem, right? So he doesn't need to actively convey the value, right? And that's the problem. That's kind of the, that's, that's the hardest part of all this is like, you know, again, when you're entitled to that girl, you don't need to be like, oh, man, let me flash my watch real quick. Yeah, look at me. I'm successful, right? It's not going to be like that. You're just like, I don't care. Like, I was, like the fatty's there. You're just like, yeah, whatever, uh, you know? So it's like, how do you get that with uh, hotter girls, right? That's... Like I said, that's why a lot of guys are here. Let me steal. Hopefully this is my cup. Otherwise, it's kind of gross, but I'll do it anyways. Um, so, some things with that. Uh, <clears throat> how should I start this out? I guess we'll start with the approach, right? Who here is going out consistently? Who here is not going out consistently? Some guys, oh, boo, why not? Damn it. Uh, for me, I'm lucky I only work on the weekends. So basically for the last three years, I've pretty much gone out at least five days a week, five, six days a week for the last three years. I start, like I said, I'm doing my Euro tour. I have an assistant who's traveling along with me the whole time. He's not here because he's lazy. And um, 
he's gonna be, I'm like, dude, we're going out at least 58 out of 60 days on this trip. Like I was back in Europe in November and October and we did, we took about two days off. So it's just like every day, like going out and hitting it hard. And uh, you learn a lot from that, right? Trying new things, doing boot camps every weekend, you learn a lot. And uh, what I like starting off with for teaching guys that are just going out, who's going out tonight? Sweet, I'll give you a couple nuts and bolts just for tonight. So like I said, when I, when I was going out before I knew about all this stuff, it was like, how do I convey that cool, awesome man? How do you convey the high value guy? And the thing is, uh, sure, at first, you're automatically gonna have like a first initial impression, right, the girl. She's gonna see you walk up, and she's like, okay, I've seen a guy like this before. Normally, this is what he's gonna be like, right? So this is where all the prejudices of like, I'm short, or I'm old, or I'm tall, and have long flowing hair. How is she gonna respond, right? I was fucking around. But uh, the thing is, even though you have that visual, like women do not respond to visual things, right? Um, it's gonna be those high value traits, like confidence, stuff like that, right? And ultimately, like, uh, the goal is, is the reason why I go mindset based is because like everything from body language, your tonality, your eye contact, all those are just like outward like manifestations of how you feel in your head, right? If you feel good, you're naturally gonna come across in the right way, right? So again, it's like build net entitlement, right? Um, before we get there though, what the problem is, I always say it's kind of like a positive feedback loop, right? Where it's like once you're in the loop, you go up to the girl, you get a good result, it builds your confidence, you have more confidence, you get better results. And it's like, yay, happy loop. But usually most guys that come to events like this or on boot camp and stuff, they're like, well the loop's over here, but I'm, I'm fucking out over here, like how do I get in the loop, right? So first we need a couple, like, I call them like cheat codes to kind of like the glitch to get in there, right? And the one that I think is uh, awesome, I guess, I wasn't gonna teach this, but I might as well anyways. There's three aspects that I te teach for the direct approach. I personally go direct. I have nothing against indirect, but I'm lazy and I'm efficient, right? It's like I, I say, uh, like I, I was, uh, my grad school, I was in a lab, like streaking bacteria plates. So it's like me with pipette. And it's like you, you become very efficient over time, right? And uh, the, other, the other example I always use is like a, a good drummer, drummer, right? I use the example of like, you have a, uh, like, dude, Tommy Lee from, what is he, not Guns N' Roses, whatever the hell, Bon Jovi, no, I don't even know. I've read the book, too. What, 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 what is he from? Tommy Lee? Yeah. Molly Crew, fuck, I read the book. Neil Strauss book. It's a great book, anyways. But, like, for me, it's like the jazz drummer, right? You have the guy who's like, I'm really good, whoa! And then you have the jazz drummer who's just like, vroom, vroom, and he's actually, like, way more proficient, he's way more awesome, and he doesn't need to do all the, like, fucking weird bullshit. And uh, so, again, it's kind of that, that same kind of gorilla headspace, same type of thing. Um, that was kind of a side tangent, but we'll go back to the three, we're, I guess we're going outer game here anyways. Three aspects of the direct approach, right? Number one is great eye contact, full eye contact, hold that shit like there's no tomorrow, just keep holding the eye contact. And then I go in full frontal, right? The thing is, especially if you go out at night, like you go up to a girl, like I don't care what the hell you're talking about, you're like, she knows why you're talking to her. It's like if you're like, oh, I have this opinion about this type of shit, it's like you could ask your buddy right here, or you could ask somebody else that's right here. You walked all the way across the room to go ask this girl her opinion. And the, again, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I think either way she knows what's going on. So I just like cut to the chase, just cut through all the bullshit. Uh, just like, hey, you're cute. Or uh, usually first night I just have dudes introduced with their name. Hi, I'm Brad, nice to meet you, right? Um, the thing is, I'm, I'm very, very idealistic. I live in extremes to where uh, I, I'm 100% extemporaneous and also, uh, like I think the words matter absolutely zero, like zero, and we can get to that if we have time to that. And that's just, again, idealistic. There's definitely the most elegant, perfect thing to say. I totally agree. But uh, the thing is, it comes back, I'm kind of all over the place, but usually what I do is on Sunday, every, guy, every question the guy asks, I'm just like, what would Puff Daddy do? What would P Diddy do? Right, would P Diddy be like, hold on, I'm gonna tell her that I only got five minutes with this girl because I'm worried she might not want to hang out with me. It's like I'm fucking P. Diddy. I don't give a shit, right? So that's kind of the headspace I try to get him into. But again, if, if you're not there yet, how do we get there? So we're coming back. We're coming full circle here. Uh, the three things, direct contact, eye contact, full frontal, boom, just go in. Uh, number two is loud projection, right? I did one boot camp. I did a boot camp for 21 nights in Dubai with this dude. He's like, the only thing I learned from you is just be loud and lead. And I'm like, that's all you learned after 21 days? But the thing is, it is kind of, uh, it says so much about yourself, right? Um, the thing is, again, when you have that first impression of the girl, 
she doesn't like she said she has initial kind of first like oh this is the this is the box I'm going to put him in but she doesn't know exactly uh, how you're going to come across so even though women are very socially calibrated and hypersensitive to kind of how you're dealing with shit they're going to respond based on how you ping off of them right so if you go in and you're kind of like hey is this cool right she's going to be like okay this guy's nervous or whatever this guy's using his little shtick whatever he's using He's not comfortable talking to a girl that looks like me, so I'm not going to talk to him, right? And that's why a lot of times what we teach is like assume attraction. Or like if you assume that attraction, it's like, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. You're cute. Mm, yeah, like, hold on. Come here. Boom. And just go right. She's like, I don't really know how to respond here, but it seems like this guy is normally when a girl talks to him that looks like me, they're attracted to me, to him. So I'm going to deal in the same. So she just kind of follows that role, right? And then it's uh, whoever's frame is stronger. But the problem with that is, nice little cliffhanger, right? Uh, the problem with that is, is how many reference points does a girl have of being like a hot girl, being the high value thing, right? Probably like pff, million or something. Whereas how many reference points do you have, or myself, or anyone getting into this, when you're starting off? You're like, this dude was on stage. He said, I'm high value. Yeah, am I high value? And uh, what Tony Robbins says, it's like you have the belief, and then you have the the table, so the belief is the top of the table. Uh, who here's read Awaken the Giant Within? Anyone? No one's read that shit? Oh man, cameraman with the, cameraman's got the phone going in the back. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, with, with Tony Rod, it's a great book, I'd definitely check it out. Um, what he talks about in there is that uh, you have a belief, which is like uh, assume attraction, higher value. And then each uh, leg of the table is a reference point, right? So the thing is, is like if I could come up here and be like, you deserve a 10. And you're like, thanks, Brad. I deserve a 10. But then how many reference points do you actually have of being with that girl that's actually 10? Zero, one, I don't know. Maybe you guys do have some. That'd be great. But you don't have a lot. Whereas how many reference points does the girl have of like, I'm the 10. Like, I cut through line. And some cho just bought me a drink. Great, yeah. Right, so how do you fucking fight that? There's a bunch of different ways. One is just building trust in the approach. I had one guy in boot camp. He was uh, a 52-year-old virgin. He's very cool, so I'm not going to make fun of him. But I'm like, you got to have abundance, dude. Have abundance. Yeah, abundance with girls. He's like, how am I supposed to have abundance? I'm, I've been alive for over half a century, and I still haven't been with a girl. Right? And I'm like, oh, shit. What did I say? But what it is, it's not abundance. When you're starting off, at least, it's not abundance of girls. Because I still don't. I'm like, it's not like I have the five playmates running around behind me like, girls, shut up. Shh, try to talk. But it is like uh, abundance, that, like trust in your skill set. Right? So trust in your ability to, you're talking to the girl, and you're like, oh, if this doesn't go well, I got nothing else. It's not like that. It's like, okay, I talked to this one. If it doesn't go well, I have the trust in myself that I can open another one, right? So that's something that uh, a lot of times what I teach is the first five minutes directly relate to the last five minutes, right? The framework you can create at the very beginning, like the framework of like, I'm the man, you're the girl, this is how we're talking, I'm leading, I'm dealing with the shit, I'm awesome, I'm high value. Sitting in that frame, that, that's like, it carries on through the whole relationship. Whether it be six months, a year, that initial, it's like, oh my god, he just came out to me. He was so alpha and cool. Yeah. Like set that frame from the, like the very beginning, right on the approach, right? So we had the two. We had eye contact. We had loud projection. I would say talk through the girl, talk a meter behind the girl. We're in Europe. I'd use metric. Uh, and then the third thing is tonality. Right, so tonality, uh, tone of voice. Who here has heard of like the trying neutral and breaking before? Has anyone heard that? It's kind of RST pimps it up. I think it's originally from David An David D'Angelo actually. Um, and what it is, you have uh, more than anything. What I've realized each year that goes by, I realize this. It's so much more and more obvious. Is that what you realize is when you're in any interaction, whether it be guy girl, guy guy, with your boss, with your parents, is that tonality is kind of like if there was ever like a scene, the Matrix type thing an amazing secret code that's going on in the game all the time, it would be tonality. Like, it's just amazing. Like, you look at, a, let's say, a restaurant. You have the, the waitress come up. She's like, hello, would you guys like anything else? So that tonality where it slants up, it's kind of a seeking rapport, a qualifying tonality. So she's trying, to, she's trying to get a bigger tip, right? Oh, would you like? In America, I don't know. We don't tip over here, right? So maybe 10%, some shit, right? Uh, but so, like, they're looking for that bigger tip. The same way as the bouncer comes up, is like, hey, where were you? Like, get away from there, right? He's like, I'm conveying authority. Ugh. 
the thing is most of this time it's completely subconscious. And it's subconscious too when you go up to the hot girl and you're like, hey, how are you doing tonight? Yeah. Or you're like, I heard go direct. You're really cute. It doesn't work. Why didn't it work? <laughs> it's because your tonality's fucked, right? So it's like, you got it. Like, it doesn't matter what you say. It's all like, like I could go out, like, I love being like a pickup nerd. One of my favorite things is going up and doing like interview mode, right? Because it's like, oh, interview mode's horrible. So I go up, and then what you have is the slanting down or the breaking. I call it like a commanding and challenge tonality. So you're like, hey, where are you from? Really? What do you do? <laughs> Interesting. It, really? Come here often? That's great, right? And the thing is, yeah, it's like I'm making it fun. It's fun with it. But it's conveying a lot of authority. But also, right, because guys are like, I don't want to sound like a dick. But you see, you have like the playful little smirk to it. So it's like, hey, where were you last? Yeah, you're cute. Come here. Right? And it's kind of, uh, what is flirting? It's like sending those mixed signals, right? It's kind of like got the, the trying and the, the breaking in there with the smile. So uh, more than anything, right? So you could come up and you like all unkempt with like shitty clothes on, horrible body language. And you're just like, hey, what's your name? <laughs> right? And she's going to be like, the thing is, you can't even really do it with bad body. Like, you're going to have good body language. Um, I have people, they're like, they're like, when you go on boot camp, do you, like, listen to what he's saying and, like, listen to how he talks? I'm like, I really don't even need to be next to the guy. I can, like, see it. I remember one time I was in Oslo, actually, was where it was. I'm going there in a week or two. And the dude was, um, I'm like, he's, he's going up, like, getting blown out, blown out, set after set. And um, all of a sudden, he, he, uh, I'm like, dude, Quit being a fucking piece of shit. Like, just go up there, be a man. Like, talk to her, good tonality, and hit it. All of a sudden, I see him go up to this girl, and I just see his head, and he's just like. And I'm like, oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. Like, I don't even need to hear it. You can see it's just like this, like, like head bob shit. Like, not that you need to be that extreme. Everyone's going to be out tonight, like, like bobblehead shit. It's not really like that, but there's like a, it's like as a man, like a fucking caveman. It's just like, oh, it's that, like, uh, it's, I could, it's like platinum, or it's just like ting, 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 ting. It just hits so nicely. Um, and the thing is, is you know, it doesn't matter what your headspace is, right? That's the biggest part. Is um, something? Uh, has anyone here seen the Blueprint by Tyler? One thing he talks about there is like your state, so your emotional state, right? And the thing is, is when you're in a good state, like let's say you walk outside here and you're like, "Holy shit! Oh, ten thousand pound! Yeah, whoa!" Is it really going to be hard to have a good night tonight? You're going to be like, "Ah, oh, make it rain!" Right? You're just going to be having fun, and it's going to be. You see some girl, you're like, "Hey, what's up?" Ah, oh, because you're in a good headspace, or you like ace a test, ace, ace an exam, or something like that. But what about that night where you're like, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, oh, right? And you're getting like left and right. Just girls are like, no, no, no. It's like, okay, well, I'm not in a good headspace. How do I get there? And the thing is, is when you're conscious of it, then it's usually even worse because it compounds it even more. We're like, oh, I'm, I'm out of state. Oh, shit. Hey, oh, my God, it's even worse. Now, uh. And then you usually just go home, right? Who's had one of those nights? No one? Okay, everyone. Cool. Okay, good. I'm like, no, I'm the only one. Ah. Uh, and I was definitely there for a while. So what it is, how to get out of that. And one of the easiest ways, the thing is, is I try, the goal is, who here, I'm just asking a lot of books, who here has read David Data, The Way of the Superior Man? It's a very classic uh, industry book. You guys should read these, Be, read some of these books. They're awesome. He talks about um, masculine and feminine polarity. And what you have is the feminine polarity is all over the place, right? So she's like, I'm wearing pink. I feel happy, but I feel kind of fat. Oh, that guy looked at me. My cell phone's sparkly, whoa! And she like, so she's completely externally focused and she builds her state from external things. Whereas a guy, we build our state from, uh, he says you gotta be on your path. Or what I say, it's just kinda like action based. Like you like, uh, you win the war! Or you like, you get the girl! Or you make the money! And that makes you feel good. Your state is drawn from within. But the problem that most guys have is that uh, they make the woman their path. Right? So the woman's all like, yeah, sparkles, whoa. And they're like, oh, hey, whoa, oh, shit. And then the thing is, like, because like, there's no polarity, um, that's a lot of times why relationships fall to shit, right? Where it either goes to both neutral or, uh, like, the guy tries it. So the girl has to become, like, the man. And I'm sure everyone has friends here where, like, they have, like, a friend who the woman wears the pants in the relationship, right? And we're all here not to do that. That's not the way to do it, right? unless you want to. But even he says like in uh, like homosexual relationships, you usually have like the butch and like the hot one or whatever. Like so even in that stuff, uh, the pitcher and catcher. Like. So uh, the goal is to keep it in the masculine, not in the feminine. This is another example too. I'm just going all over the place because I only got like an R. Is um, on the approach, you know, who here likes dance floor game? Anyone? Who here would like it, but it's really hard? 
Yeah, we're in Europe, right? Dan see, in America, you go to, like, let's go find some girls. Let's go to the dance floor. And you're like, oh, man, they're everywhere. Like, in Europe, you're like, let's go to the dance floor. Well, it's all dudes. Like, I don't know what it, like, everyone here is more, like, open to dancing and shit. In, in America, we're very uh, uptight or PC or something. But uh, with dance floor, guys are like, okay, I totally agree with the concept of be equal or higher energy than the girl, right? I think that's, I think that's very important. You guys have all heard that before, right? But the problem is, is if she's like, yeah, whoa, like, how are you going to trump that? How are you going to be higher energy than that? And the thing is, is this kind of ties into with the gorilla headspace again, is that there's different types of energies. And so you want to feed into the masculine. So you don't want to be like, ah, dancing monkey, crazy shit. But you go up with a more, um, with a different type of energy. You go up with a, like a masculine, it's like an intensity, where it's just like, hey, you're cute. Like the example I use is like, you know, if you went to a girl and she's like, and you're like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And you got like a knife or something. Like she's probably going to stop dancing, right? Not that that's a good opener at all, but the thing is there's different types of energies. So when I talk about the Maslow's hierarchy, if you go in and you're like, hey, you're cute, what's your name? It doesn't matter how much fun she's having. She's like, whoa, what is this? This is new. This is a masculine man. I like this. And usually they'll be like, they'll be like, I know. And then you're like, shit, bitch. Or if they're like, thanks, so are you. Or they're like, thanks, or whatever, that type of shit. And then what they'll do is they'll stop and all of a sudden they'll be like, and then it'll start grinding up on you, right? But you have to like first, first get them in your rhythm, right? Lead the rhythm, as opposed to like the dudes are just like, what's up, girls? Yeah, oh, hey, what's up? Turn around, yeah, awesome. Right, that's obviously kind of a bad way to do it. <clears throat> Although I'm sure everyone's seen someone do it that way. Unless someone teaches it here, I mean, it's amazing. If people teach it, but uh, I'm all about the direct, just go in, cut to the chase, because I'm lazy, like I said. Um, so somebody tell me, what were the three types? Does anyone remember? The three types of, sorry, direct approach. Three types of the direct approach. Eye contact. Eye contact, great, that's one. Loud. Mm. Yeah, loud, be, be loud. Yeah, with eye contact, it's kind of full frontal. Those are kind of one big ones. And then the third one is tonality. So we're talking about tonality some more. The thing that's cool with uh, the commanding, authoritative, breaking tonality is that it, it creates an autopilot response, right? So if I go and I'm like, hey, what's your name? The autopilot response is to go into like a qualifying, like, oh, my name's Sarah, right? So it's cool because um, one of the more like advanced concepts that I'll teach the guys if they've ever taken, uh, like a multi if they're alumni, like they took one program and they're coming back again, or if you've been going out a lot, is to uh, get the girl to invest more, get her to like game you. And one of the easiest ways is using that tonality. When we do a lot of infield footage type stuff, the camera dude's he's like, damn, the girl's just like, She's looking around like, what's, like, you need to talk more. I'm like, I don't really talk. And again, I guess since we're tying this into the gorilla headspace, is that through using tonality, it gets her to do a lot of the work. So I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, I'm from Sweden. It's so much fun there. Like, I'm Stockholm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's totally interesting. I love Stockholm so much. It's really, really? Yeah, no, you got to come. It's so good. So it's just like by using that tonality, it gets her to kind of like go on the other end where she's just like, talk, 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 and talking a lot more than I need to which is great because I don't really like talking to girls. I mean, like talking. And uh, no, I love talking to women. They're so much fun conversation. And uh, it's great because it sets that right frame. It gets her game in you, and it says all the right things. Um, so tonality is good. And, and the other thing with that is like now she's thinking in her head. She's like, hmm, I, the only reference points, the only experiences I have of talking to someone like this are my last boyfriend or my boss or my dad or something like that. And the only type of people that talk to me this way are very high value, confident, authoritative people, and those are the type of people I'm attracted to, right? So this again is setting that right framework right from the very beginning of like, I do this all the time, I'm the cool guy, boom, 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 and even if you're in a bad headspace, you can still somewhat force it out. The goal is long term. To, the thing that, the coolest part about it too, is um, who has read the game? I'm sure everyone's read the game, right? Pretty much everyone. Uh, and there, uh, he talks about like conscious competence, and unconscious competence. And now that's like the holy grail. And uh, the thing is when you have, uh, when you feel entitled to the girl again, right? When you talk to that girl you just feel good about, naturally your tonality is gonna be great. It's gonna be cool. So you don't even really need to be conscious of it. And the goal is, is like as you go out there, you do it, you get the positive reference points. And then because of that, you start building those good, the good aura, the good reference points. And then you do feel like, yeah, this is going to go great. You, hey, what's your name? And you're not like, use good tonality. It just comes out naturally. So that's why I really like it. But the thing is, like I said, the more and more I teach this stuff, like year after year, it's kind of, 
you realize the same things over and over again, and it's like, I can't turn it off. Like, I'll be watching TV, and I'll be like, hmm, why do all the broadcasters sound the same? And it's like, oh, because they're trying to be authoritative and have that good tonality. And they're not thinking that. They're just like, my boss had good tonality or used this, sounded this way, right? Especially female, like, sports anchors. You notice how they're like, hey, on the 5 o'clock news today, blah, 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 blah. It's like, what the fuck? Why do they all sound the same? And that's that reason. It's that authoritative tone that they want to put out, right? Um, it's funny because then I'll have guys, they'll take boot camp and they'll come back. They'll be like, I got fired from my job. They, it's never that extreme, but I'm like, because I preface it at the end of boot camp. Because they're like, yeah, my boss was like, where are the papers? And I was like, they're right over there. Right? So it's funny how, like, because, you know, in, like, the, in the, corporate, the corporate world, right, you have, like, a distinct hierarchy. But the thing is, is just be conscious of it and realize it. And then you can use that to your advantage. It works really well. Um, you know, the one is, is, like, bouncer game, right? How are, are, the, are the clubs in London, are they hard to get into? I, I don't go out here a lot. Are they? Yeah? No? Yeah? Um, it's funny because the dude who gets into the club and the dude who doesn't says the exact same thing, right? The dude who doesn't get in, he goes to the front. And he's like, nope. He's like, but my friends aren't here. No, I'm, I'm just came to have fun. You know, I'm just traveling. I'm, I'm from U.S. No, it's going to be fun. That dude's not getting in, right? Whereas the next guy goes, he's like, hey, sorry, uh, bottles only. Um, no, my friends are inside. I'm from the U.S. No, I just came out to have a good night tonight. Oh, sure, right? So isn't it interesting like, how everyone kind of falls into that? It's like, it really is kind of like uh, you can just cut your way into kind of any different type of thing and talk to the people. But the thing is you don't want to be antagonistic, right? With the bouncer, you don't want to be like, no, my friends are inside. Because it's like they're going to be like, what? It's just going to be too far. So you keep it below neutral. But uh, yeah, you, do, you just don't give your power away. And then you just don't get too antagonistic with it. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, two things I was going to say with that. Talk about like calibration, right? The thing is, is guys are like, well, when do I use break and report tonality or commanding tonality? When do I like, how should I calibrate, right? Um, a lot of people don't really talk much about calibration. I, I usually do what it is. It's based on, uh, ultimately, it comes down to value, right? So if you're talking to the girl, at the very beginning of the interaction, I want to convey as much value as possible. So I'm going to be pretty breaking. But the thing is, it's not like you're going to go to the girl at the mall and be like, hey, what are you doing, right? She's going to go, like stealing my purse, some shit like that, right? <laughs> but at 2 a.m. on the dance floor, the girl who just blew four dudes off, I'm like, okay, time to bring the ice. Hey, attitude. Hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. What's your name? Hey, come here, right? And it's gonna be pretty forceful. You say that to the like the the fatty. She's gonna be like, ah, why is the cool guy yelling at me? <laughs> right? So that's the other thing is calibrating to like how attractive the girl is. Usually, the more attractive she is. Uh, the more I'm going to kind of go in, because you've got to convey more value. Not that I'm looking at her and like, she's high value. It's just like her headspace is that she has a lot of value. So I know that I have to convey more to do that, um, which is kind of, I guess, I'm falling into like, this is getting back into the gorilla alpha wolf shit. Because guys are like, yeah, OK, I'll convey value. Yo, what's up, girl? Blah, 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 blah. And that's obviously bad. But the thing is, that's kind of the friction in the middle ground, right? A lot of times when you're in the intermediate stages, I would hate to be a girl and deal with this. Like, see, not that it's bad. I mean, I'm still going through it too. But a lot of when you're in the intermediate to advanced stages, it's kind of like if, if the girl was where we're at, it'd be like she'd be like super hot. And all of a sudden, she'd like, <laughs> like gain 100 pounds like as you're talking to her. And then she'd be like super hot again. And you'd be like, what the fuck? What's going on? That's kind of where a lot of you guys, I'm assuming, are at, right? Because what it is is you're, you're conveying like high value and low value at the same time. So guys go up, they're like, ah, oh, you're cute. She's like, oh, he's hot. And then you're like, so where are you from? And she's like, what, what is this? I'm like, hey, 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 hey. And then she's like, oh. And then you're like, check out my watch. And she's like, no. <laughs> like, so it's like you're, 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 and what it is over time is like you just keep the high shit. And that, that stuff, you, you're learning all that stuff this week. And realize that it's all kind of like doing that type of shit, or weekend, I guess. And then what it is is just through time, you iron out kind of the bad shit. And then you just keep that like fucking awesome shit going the whole time is the end goal, like through going out, a lot of experience. But you got to go out for you guys. Not going out, right? Um, so yeah, the two, the two ways to calibrate are, yeah, I guess there's three ways. One is w when I don't have value, right? So guys are like, what do you do when the girl comes, like a friend comes in or a dude comes in? Then like, you know, whatever, just stand there for a little bit, maybe check my email. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, it's been a minute. This is too long. Hey, what are you guys talking about? That's boring. Let's talk about orange peels. OK, cool. Yeah, zest, zesty. Right, so, but I want to use a breaking rapport to get back in. Because if I'm like, what are you guys talking about? She's going to be like, eh, done with you. Right? 
Um, the other one is like the bouncer pushes you away or like some shit happens, there's a fight. Like, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, anyway, boom, and then I'm gonna be back in. But the thing is, is once it hooks, right, then you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, somebody give me a definition of hooking. What is hooking? Hookering? <laughs> is that what I heard? I was like, <laughs> prostitution? I'm like, what? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. What was that? Yeah. And what, and what, and what, what creates that? She said, well, yeah, uh, when she doesn't want you to leave, when she wants you to stay. What creates that? What makes it hook? Interest. Value. Int value, right? Yeah, and she's interested. She wants to know more about you. So the thing is, if, it, if your set doesn't hook, if you're, I'm trying to get rid of saying set for some reason, if your interaction does not hook, the girl does not want you to stay there, it's because you didn't convey enough value. How do you convey more value? Going harder, right? If, if it's right at the beginning, I like, I'll have a, a student, he'll go in and be like, hey, what's up, how's it going? She's like, Pff, blows up. I'm like, was that 100%? Did you go in hard enough? Did you go in strong enough? If you didn't, if it doesn't hook pretty quickly, it's because you didn't go in strong enough, right? So you want to convey more value earlier on in the interaction. The other thing is, is again, like I said, you don't do that at the mall. The same way at 10 p.m., people are just kind of getting out. You don't really need, there's not a lot of stimulus and they're not that receptive, so you're not gonna go in like super hard as opposed to like two or three or four in the morning, something like that. Um, so those are the, the things I kind of calibrate. Sweet, all right, what time am I, 45 minutes or so? Cool, um, so again, Alpha Wolf, Be the Gorilla. So those were kind of, that's like an outer game fix. Um, some of the more internal aspects of it. Uh, the thing is, is again, like I said, to get more and more entitled. I noticed that as, as you go to each level of, of like hotness, I don't know, maybe some of the guys in the back who are uh, rocking and rolling notice this, but I noticed that when you hit each level of hotness of girls, it's kind of like a spiral, where it's like you learn it with the sevens, and then all of a sudden it works. Then you learn it with the eights, and then it works. And then it's like, what do you are? You're getting more and more reference points, so it feels more confident, and you just do it naturally. And then you're like, okay, nines, and you're kind of like fighting your own internal, like the value you're putting on the girl, you know? And the, the same reason why I think one of the best things for guys that are trying to get with hotter girls is to go with the binary system, where it's like one, I do her, zero, I wouldn't. Because what you do is you kind of separate from the, you separate from that like putting value on the looks type shit. I actually, I, lately I go more with like trinary, where it's like zero, I wouldn't, one, I would, two, I'd show pictures of my friends. So usually those are the, the three that I go with or whatever. Which is kind of like the advanced level, I guess, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but so, so some things with uh, the hotness stuff. One of the things that RSD we've been teaching for probably like two or three years now, which has been fucking sick, makes boot camps go so much easier, is the idea of momentum, building momentum. Because right, so like when you go, because what is the byproduct of entitlement? It's like indifference, right? When you're entitled to the girl, you feel indifferent. Like you're just like, whatever, cool, let's do this. I don't really care, nothing's a big deal to me. Um, so the thing that's really cool is when you go out and you're like, approach, 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 approach. Is it that much different to talk to number 15 and number 16? Number 16, you're like, hey, was, okay, I'll do another one. It's not like you're just totally like, I don't give a shit. So the thing is, is that girl, you're, you're talking to number 16, and she like feels that you're indifferent, right? And she's not like, she's not like, oh man, he's indifferent because he's talked to every single girl in the room. She just feels that indifference in that moment. So it's cool. She feels that you obviously must be entitled to her, right? So through, that's another kind of cheat code that you can use. By you doing approach, 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 and you're building social momentum, uh, it gets you to feel entitled. After you, talk, you talk to 15 girls in a row, you're just like, hey, what's up? Yeah, but I've talked to a lot of girls here, I just don't care, and it's gonna go really well, right? Has anyone done like 15 sets in a night and kind of had that feeling, right? Where you're just like, woo. I mean, if you do like 30 or 40 sets, that's usually bad, right? Because you're like, hey, what's up? That's like too short set method or whatever. But the first, oh man, this is gonna be on film, I'm just gonna do it anyways, here goes like my, uh, my shit, but what I call it is, <laughs> I shouldn't, it's like jack-off theory is what I call it. So it's kind of like, you know, like when you're watching like porn, you're just kind of like, yeah. Uh, it's not like that, right? It's the same thing when you go out and approach. Like when you go out, you gotta be like, yeah, oh, and then you get like social flow going. It's the same thing, it's the same thing, right? Like, so it's kind of like, yeah, mom and dad, whoa. Um, so like that, that's, you gotta, you can't let time go in between. You can't let it simmer down. You just gotta keep that shit rolling, 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 like the whole time to uh, get in that flow. So that's another reason why a lot of guys maybe don't get into that headspace. The other reason, you know, and you also have micro momentum and macro, right? So the fact that I'm gonna go out for almost the next 60 days in a row, I can really sit around till like one or two in the morning and just be like, all right, time to do this. Hey, what's up, you're cute, nice to meet you. 
And I'm, because in your head, you're like, can I do this? Can I do this? Oh, I did it yesterday. Okay, cool. Right? But if it's been a week, or a lot of guys, if they work, like, have a hard job at work, you're very logical, like engineers and stuff like that. You're like, oh, uh, and then you go out and you're like, now I gotta be social. It's gonna take a while to like shift gears, basically. The same reason, like, you know, if I do like a debrief, like, I do debriefs at the end of night sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, you did this wrong, you did this right, that was great, that was shitty, let's work on that for tomorrow. And then I go back to the nightclub and I'm just like, uh, because I completely disengaged from that social headspace. And it's like, you almost gotta start over, which sucks, right? Um, so, and, and then you guys notice that if you go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, usually Saturday is the best day because you've been building momentum all weekend. Uh, but you also have it in the night. So a lot of what it is is just after a couple minutes, just hitting it, hitting it right away, right? So it's like you don't want to, what do most guys do? They go into the, the club and they're like, all right, now I'm going to get a drink. Yeah. Oh, I kind of got to go to the bathroom. Mmm. Let's go check out the dance floor. Ah, oh, I need another drink. And then all of a sudden, like, an hour and a half goes by. And you're like, no, it's time to do approach. Hey, what's up? Ah! And then you do, like, two or three, and you're like, this sucks. Let's go somewhere else. And then it's just bullshit. Your night sucks, right? So you have to start off at the very beginning of the night. What I usually do is, like, if you're in a new venue, just go in, kind of get relaxed, five minutes, get a drink, whether water or alcohol, if you're having it, whatever. I don't really care either way with that. And then really quickly get started and start hitting up those sets and get in the flow and get going. Don't let too much time wait. And that's, uh, the thing is, it's not even like a skill. It doesn't matter how good you are. That's just purely a discipline. And the thing is, it, it'll automatically make your nights better, guaranteed, if you just have the discipline. I know some guys, if, if anyone, has, anyone here have like really bad approach anxiety still, some of the guys that aren't going a lot, it's like if you have really bad, it's just like make it a rule. Be like one of my friends, he goes, the first girl on the left, I approach every time when I walk in the venue. I don't care if she's fat, I don't care if she's 80 or 14, I'm gonna approach her <laughs> and say what's up, right? Just to get, just get like over the threshold. I know a lot of guys that I know that are better, they don't even, it doesn't even need to be a girl, just talk to like a cool dude. Talk to like some player dude, be like, what's up, how are the girls? He's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty shitty tonight, well, whatever. And like, at least you're getting the ball around, it's flowing. And what it is is uh, when, you're, when you're talking, it's cause you can't do it, you're like, oh, just talk to my friends and get social. But the thing is, you have too many commonalities to kind of tie off of to and like fall into. So it has to be like a stranger. I mean, do it while you're in line. That's the easiest. It's like, oh yeah, is this place cool tonight? Just either get that or the bouncer. Or if you guys are in the same place over and over again, find like a bouncer or bartender that you can kind of start building that network with. So you get in quicker and get free drinks and all that good stuff. But just talk to someone quickly and build that momentum. Um, so that's one way to kind of get into entitlement. Another way to sneak into uh, getting into more of that entitlement-based stuff, which I think is really cool, the first step is realizing when you're talking to the girl, is, again, you don't want to be in your head and like, oh, am I outcome dependent? Am I entitled? Uh, but there is like a, a, a nice like, kind of like happy medium where you need to become almost conscious of when you're being outcome dependent, right? When you're needy, when you're, when you're like, oh, really? Ha ha ha. You're like, oh shit, I'm being really chode right now. This, this sucks. I need to be like, chill back, right? So the first step is at least just becoming conscious of that. Because I think most guys, you know, the thing is like with a sticking point, does anyone not know what a sticking point is? Not know? So everyone knows. Okay, so sticking point like when you hit like a, a plateau and you go to the next one. The thing is it's never hard to uh, get out of the sticking point. Usually what it is is figuring out what it is, right? Usually it's like, uh, like all of a sudden somebody like, dude, you have bad tonality. I do? I do? Really? I have bad tonality? Shit. And then once you know it, you become conscious of it. And it's kind of like, you know, like for me, doing a lot of public speaking, it's the same type of thing. I used to say, I probably do, I'll watch this video and be like, damn. But I say uh, whatever a lot. So I'll be like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about or whatever. And now every time I say it, it's kind of like, like nails on the chalkboard, like, uh. So because you're conscious of it, your head automatically starts working on it to fix the sticking point. But the thing is, you have to be conscious of it and you have to go out, right? Otherwise, it's like you can't just sit at your home and meditate like tonality. <laughs> Tonality, give me better tonality. What do I need to do? It's like just go out and get some reference points. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of the meditation shit. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, so uh, outcome dependence, right? How to like notice when you're outcome dependent. And it could be different for every guy. Just notice when you feel like, oh, I really want this. I want this really bad. I've really put a lot of value on this. I've never been with a girl this hot before. This would be so cool. My friends would think I'm so cool if I got this girl, right? Um, and then it's like, okay, how do we push through that? Because again, when you're entitled, you don't feel that. 
And what I really like doing, which is a cool little thing, and I've only done it a couple times, but every time I do, it's really helped me in those situations, is when you're out, let's say tonight or this weekend, and you're talking to someone, and for whatever reason you feel entitled, right? You're like, oh, this is going really well. I don't even care. Almost kind of like be willing to throw the interaction away and be like, start becoming conscious of it. Be like, how's my tonality right now? How's my body language? How's my eye contact? All these different things, and you're like, oh shit, that's pretty cool. I like that. And then, so then when you go up to the girl and you're not, you're outcome dependent, and you're like, oh man, I really want this, like take the step back and be like, hold on, act entitled, right? And the thing is, is like, is that congruent? Is that 100% how you should do it? Absolutely not. It should just be like, you do it. But the thing is, it's better to be like, act how I am is in when I'm entitled, as opposed to be like, be James Bond, or like be some like weird shit. It's gonna be more closer to congruence, and sometimes it's enough, where I said before, where you have the high value and the low value, you're still kind of staying in this high value realm. And uh, it's not as much of the low value bullshit where most girls will be all right with it. And they'll be cool with it, kind of. Um, cool, so I still got like 10 minutes. Um, so those are some entitlement things. And one other thing that I, whoa, spilling water. Last thing I'll get into before I'll ask some questions here um, is uh, I call it like kind of the, the Jersey Guido uh, persona. Or in, in Europe, I always use like the Italian macho man. It's the same type of idea. And it's like, okay, well, why, why is this guy good? Why is this guy, because you know, you see that guy, you're like, the natural? Why does he get the girls, you know? And what it is, is uh, when he goes up, I always say it's kind of like he's got this internal hip hop track of him being like, I'm the boss, I'm the boss, I'm the man, I'm the man, holy shit, oh yeah, I'm amazing, look at my tan, look at my muscles, right, all that. So he's like, and what it is, is he's, Usually what I say is that guys that come to these type of things, events, and like learn about this stuff, is you're too smart for your own good, right? Why, why are the guys that are kind of stupid, kind of get a lot of girls? It's because they're completely oblivious to any social feedback. They're just like, she's like, fuck you. He's like, nice, playing hard to get. I'm the boss, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, right? So he's so stupid, he doesn't even ping off of that, right? Whereas guys, we're like, we're hypersensitive, so we're like, oh my God, she looked away. She twirled her hair, what does that mean? Does that mean she likes me? Does that mean she doesn't like me? What do I do? Holy shit, right? And uh, like, right, everyone's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, how do you cross that threshold? And the thing is, is or how do you become the Jersey Guido or the Macho Man? And what it is, is you can never really turn that stuff off, but you just have to realize to not put any value in it whatsoever. So it's like, I can't turn that off. I'm like, oh man, she's looking away. That's an indicator of things not going well. But I know if I feed into that or like, start meditating on it and thinking about it even more, it's only gonna be that self-fulfilling prophecy. And so much of uh, social dynamics in general is like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whose frame is stronger, right? And I'm saying like one of the best kind of headspaces to be in is that like, I'll say gorilla, but it's more just like entitled headspace. Like I feel entitled, assume attraction, I'm the high value one, I'm here and you're gonna love me, I'm the coolest dude here, I'm the coolest guy you're gonna meet tonight, and let's do this. And again, it sucks because if, if only it was that easy to just like flip the switch. But that's actually a good thing. Because then you'd be watching TV and they'd be like, there's aliens outside. You'd be like, there's aliens, whoa! It's like you have, that, you have that in your head that your mind is smart enough that you can't really trick it quickly. But it's all about like forcing that frame, forcing that frame, and then using some of the kind of like cheat codes I talked about earlier to kind of get some of those reference points. But again, what it ties back to is long term. Remind me to bring up hotter girls if I don't bring this up again. Like hotter girls, yeah. Long term, you want to get it to the point where uh, you're just getting those reference points and it happens naturally. And I totally, that wasn't even what I was talking about. But what, I, what that made me think of is uh, a lot of times when, who here is like decent with like the average girls but is looking for hotter girls? Anyone in here? It's like, no, I need all the girls. Uh, the problem that a lot of guys are like, I can get the, the sevens, but it's, just, it's different. I don't know, something's different. And, and sure, there is the whole your internal headspace thing that you got to deal with which is one side, which I talked about before. But then the other thing that is really interesting that when you get with an, a more attractive woman is that you're not gonna get as many IOIs. You're not gonna get as many, much positive feedback from the girl, right? The example that I use is, uh, let's say uh, you're walking down the street and right, you find like a thousand pound on the ground. You're like, oh, thousand pound, shots, let's do it, right? Whereas like if Bill Gates was like, oh, sweet. And he just keep on going. Like he, would, he wouldn't even care. He'd be like, "Yeah, another person not starving in Africa." Like uh, 
it's not a big deal to him. It's the same thing for like an attractive woman. Like, like when like the seven, if you come up and you start developing these like high value traits, which happens pretty quickly if you're just going out, is that like a seven, she's like, oh my God, yeah, oh, the cool guy, yes, it's like my one chance for love, right? Whereas like when like a, like a very attractive woman, she's like, oh sweet, this is cool. This is how it should be, yeah, cool. Like she likes it, she's having fun with you, but she's not gonna be like, ha, 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 yeah, all this stuff. So guys are like, it's different. What's going on here? I don't know. And the thing is, is um, so many times, especially when you're in intermediate stages, you don't have a lot of experience. You're just kind of like, you're going up and you're like, oh, at least I'm talking to her. Yeah, she's laughing, cool, this is good. This is going well. Oh, and you're too busy like um, being the seller instead of the buyer. Does that make, you guys understand that frame? Like you're trying to sell yourself as opposed to like, what do you got? Right, so you're too busy on the seller side, like, oh, what, is, what does she think about this? Does this work? Am I, should I say this? Oh, damn it, I don't have anything else to say here. Oh, as opposed to being on the other side where you're just like, what do you got? Cool, really? Interesting. I don't care. Which is kind of where the girl falls into, not because she wants to, because you set that frame, right? And again, this ties into when you're entitled, it happens naturally, but you just want to get it where your frame is stronger than hers. I guess I'll just kind of say this, because this is one of my favorite things to talk about, too, is... Um, is that same kind of frame thing that's going on, it's actually going on right now. You talk about mind, I'm mind fucking you right now, guys. It's going on, you don't realize this? What it is, is when you talk to the girl, again, she's got her frame like, yeah, I'm having fun. And then you have yours and you're like, I want you. Whatever it is, that's obviously a bad one. It's the same thing when I walk in this room and I walk in and I'm like, what's up, guys? And you're all like, right? It's who, whose reality is stronger, right? So I walk in, mine's like, I want them having fun. I want this to be cool. And then if you guys are like, I hate RSD, who are you? You have long hair, right? I'm gonna be like, ah. So if I ping off of you, and that's like 30 people here, or however many people here, it's gonna be like, uh, oh, where I have to be like, no, my frame is stronger. It's the same thing if I'm teaching boot camp, and the student comes up and he's like, this place is really hard. Yeah, there's, the girls are so mean, and I'm like, you're right. It is really hard. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. Right, I can't have that frame, obviously, when I'm working. So I get like, no, dude, this place is awesome. Let's do this. Come on, let's go. Oh, let's do this shit. Yeah. Even if there's like three girls and I'm like, well, inside I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Uh, I talk about like be the gorilla. The other one that I, I'm trying to figure out how to teach this more, uh, more better. That doesn't even make sense. But it's the idea of like the con artist and what that frame is is uh, like you see the movie Catch Me If You Can, right? You know where he's like the fake uh, pilot or whatever. Right, so I'm sure at one point he's like flying the plane. I have my pilot's license actually, but all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, and he hits like some button and the co-pilot's like, dude, what the fuck, why you hit that shit? And in his head he's like, oh shit, oh shit, right? And this is like a big deal, he's gonna he could go to jail, but he's like, oh no dude, I was just like testing that out, yeah, totally, just, uh, yeah, well, what do you, what, you've never done that before? Oh, right, so, but in his head he's like, oh my God, oh my God. So that's that same, when you're in the, the friction point in between kind of like getting to the, the higher levels of entitlement and when you're still like trying to get there, it's the same thing. You go up to a girl and you're like, hey, what's up? You're cute. And she's like, and in your head you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. What you have to do is you have to hold the frame even more. What guys do, they go like, oh, what does that mean? I need to do this. And they're reacting to the situation as opposed to what you should do. It's like you have to hold it even more. That's why guys that are really funny usually have the strongest frames, right? So a funny dude, like let's say like Sasha Baron Cohen, he comes on stage and he like, cause he's Jewish or something and he's like, I wanna kill all the Jews or, or like some stuff like, that little snippet's gonna be cut out and I'm gonna, that's gonna be on like, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, no! But uh, like, um, so, like this like, he's anti-Semitic, like Brad Rarsey, like, ah. So, but he comes up there and everyone in the audience is like, did he just say that? But he's completely, he's just like, and he like holds the frame and because of that tension, that's what creates the humor, that what, that's what creates laugh, right? The people that are worse at telling jokes are like, hold on, let me tell you that. It's all, it's all, it's all, and they're like laughing as they're telling because they're kind of nervous to create that tension. But that tension is what actually creates the funniness. So you got to hold that frame even more when you're not getting, when you, there's a dissonance to what you expect, that's when you have to hold it even more, right? So it's the same thing when you're, appro when you're approaching a girl and you're like, hey, what's up, you're cute, nice to meet you. And she's like, it's like, all right. I always say it's kind of like the floor drops out. I'm like, yeah, you know what? So yeah, just in London for a day. I'm here to have some fun. I think it should be cool. Yeah, you know what? Like, I got in last night. It was totally jet lag. Took some melatonin though. Now I'm all good. Blah 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 blah. And I'm just plow 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 plow. Good tonality. And in my head, I'm like, keep conveying value. Sooner or later, she'll turn. 
right? And the thing that's cool is uh, most guys, right, before you get into pickup, you're like, okay, you go up to some girl, you're like, hey, what's up? And she's like, fuck you. And you're like, oh, man, she didn't like me, right? Then when you get into this stuff, you're like, hey, what's up? And she's like, fuck you. You're like, oh, damn, that was a bad approach. I need to go back to the library and learn some more, <laughs> right? And then what happens is when you hit the, but you're still like, oh, that was bad. Whereas for me, when I'm like, hey, what's up? You're cute. And she's like, I'm like, oh, nice. Screening for a cool guy, right? Because she's just kind of screening out. She can't say hi to everyone. Luckily, I'm the coolest guy here. Time to show off the chops. Hey, attitude. Blah, 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 and I'm going to do all the shit because I actually like that. I prefer that. I actually prefer that over where she's like, hey, nice to meet you. Because what happens if she kind of gives me that initial kind of bullshit, it's uh, kind of like a shit test, right? What happens when you pass a shit test? Anyone? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, attraction goes up, right? Because she's testing you to see if you're congruent, if you're a cool guy, and you're like, yes, I am cool. So because you have that initial resistance at the beginning of the interaction, and then you pass it, actually you're further along than if she was like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And it's going really well, right? So you see how that's a, a nice little reframe there, where like I'm actually looking forward to the resistance and being like, da 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 Whereas, yeah, five minutes, 10 minutes goes by. Then it's like, okay, this is just a waste of time. And then I'm like, well, she's so stupid, she doesn't even real how cool, realize how cool I am. That's my other reframe, right? It's always her fault, not mine. And uh, yeah, it, it gets you in that same, that uh, be the buyer, not the seller type frame. Um, cool. Well, I guess that's about an hour. So I can do some question and answers here. Yeah, so yes, how to get better at um, cultivating more of an authoritative tonality, basically. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing is just becoming conscious of it in everything. Like, so when you're walking down the street and you hear a couple talking, like you could go to a restaurant and you see two, like you see all the couples, and all you do is have to listen in on the conversation, and you can be like, okay, that dude's pretty cool, and the girl's totally all about it. And I, I could do it with a blindfold on. I could be like, yep, this is going really well. Over here, I'm, and she's like, oh, really? The dude's like all like with the bad tonality stuff. And once you're like hyper conscious of it, you're naturally going to notice it in yourself, and you're naturally going to do all the right things to correct it. The other thing is, is every guy has reference points of being in that authoritative role, whether it be like training at work, or maybe you have like a dog, right? Hey, don't cross the road. Hey, hey, get over here. Come on, sit down. Right? It's almost like treat the girls like dogs, is there, right? Hey, yeah. Was, I said, like, Tyler's like, you got to get rid of all this derogatory massage. So I'm trying, but, uh, like, uh, so it's like, but you want to have, like, or, like, your niece, right? Hey, hey, hold my hand when you cross the street, right? All the, like, everyone has some of those reference points somewhere in their background, and that's that high-value kind of frame again. So th those are the two ways is, like, think about that and try to um, bring that out when you're talking to the girl. Or uh, the other thing, too, is just all you really have to do is be um, hyper-conscious of when you go into the trying, when you go into the qualifying. Because most guys, when you talk to your friends and stuff, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, that's awesome, dude, yeah. Some, every so often there's a guy like that. But normally when you talk to your guy friends, you're just like, ah, yeah, 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 and you have good tonality. It's just then you go up to the hot, hot girl and you're like, hey. And then you just want to be like, oh. And again, even when that happens, when you're talking to her, just be like, that's not the end. It's not like it's over. But you're like, oh, shit, that was bad. Bring it back down. Oh, really? That's great. Cool. Da, 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 da. And so those are kind of uh, some ways to help out. Does that answer, answer it? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Someone else. Oop, hold on a second. Um, sometimes when like, I try to act entitled, it will sort of, the, the set will drift apart. And it will sort of end up just me sort of, I don't know, I can't explain it, but instead of, instead of acting entitled, it's as if I'm not sort of interested in them and then she sort of loses interest in me and then I go and get a drink and she goes get a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so he talks about, he was talking about um, sometimes when you feel entitled um, or when you're acting entitled to the girl, she doesn't even think that you like her, basically, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and what it is is uh, there's two sides of kind of the, the game that are going on here in any interaction. And this is a, a really good example is, let's say you go for the number. You're like, hey, give me your number. Sometimes she'll be like, no. And the reason that she doesn't want to give you her number is because she's like, oh, he's not even going to call me. Like, she, he doesn't even care. And that's one side. The other side is like, oh, this guy's weird. I don't want his number. So how, what are those two different things? One is uh, you have value. 
So you're conveying enough value. That part you have fine. The part that you're not having enough of is qualification, right? So you're not qualifying the girl. And you don't need to be like, hey, can you cook? Are you adventurous? Like all that, that's not necessary. It's just like, I, usually for me, it's like, I like you. You're fun. The other thing is, is getting physical. If you're getting physical, it's not like she's like, he doesn't like me, yeah. right? You know, so that, that, that's usually a big thing too. If you're getting physical with it, uh, you know, the, the other thing is even realizing how much eye contact can convey, convey. Like I don't even need to be getting physical with the girl. And like with, my, with your eyes, like you can just be like, mm, I call it like the bedroom eyes. Where you're like pi picturing her, like undressing her with your eyes type look, that type of yeah. thing. And then she's like, this guy, even though we're talking about the weather, there's something else going on underneath <laughs> here, right? So just get that, get that more like, mm, like that dominant kind of masculine. Okay. That'll help out a lot. Anyone else? Hold on a second. Um, we talked about eye contact, and um, as you're aware, eye contact is quite difficult to do. Um, for instance, um, I travel a lot by trains, yeah, and sometimes opposite me there'll be an attractive lady, and we make eye contact, and of course at, at that point, you then, both of you, look away. Can you give me any advice to what to do in that sort of situation? Sure. Yeah, I have some good advice and some weird advice. Uh, he's asking about like, okay, so you're on the tube or something, see a girl crossed, you, you make eye contact, and then you dart away, like how to move forward from there. Part of it, what, what I realize is as I've gotten more great, like good results and success, is that I look at girls differently. And there's times where I, I know it was basically the initial eye contact that I made with her was what ended up making me ultimately get with her. It was because something just happened, we looked over, and she saw me and she's like, holy shit, who's that guy? So part of it is, is you're gonna divert your eyes less as you have more confidence in yourself. And you kind of, as you get more results, you get more reference points of women being like sexual beings. And you're like, okay, they want this more than I do. So when you're looking at them, you're not like, oh, I don't wanna stare at her, like, I don't wanna objectify her, I don't wanna look at her like a piece of meat. Where I'm like, yeah, she's getting turned on by this, right? But it's coming from a more high value headspace, right? If you feel low value and you're like, it's just gonna be creepy. She's, you're like, she's like, whoa, the weird dude's looking at me. Like the homeless dude that does that shit. I'm sure you've seen that too, right? And that's what it is too. You're like, I don't wanna be that guy. But the thing is, is when you have the value, you can get away with anything, right? I can do interview mode or something like that. For me, and this is the weird part, what, what I kinda do is, I've noticed like when, whenever I make eye contact with like a really hot girl, it's kinda like they do this thing where they like look at you and they don't divert their eyes, but they just keep it on the same thought so that it's like, and like, so like they, they hold it, but they just like wander off. So it's like, oh, I like that. I'm not afraid to look away, but also it doesn't mean that much to me. Like that's kind of the headspace. So that, that's kind of, when, I'm, when I make really strong eye contact with a hottie, I try to do that. I'm like, yeah. And then in my head, I'm like laughing at myself because it's so like somewhat contrived. But, um, and the thing is, is like eye contact, it sucks because you can't really fake it. That's the tough part. So the goal is, is when you divert your eyes, one, be like, shit, that should piss you off because you should get to the point where you don't divert your eyes and then kind of maybe do the thing that I was saying type thing. The other thing that, um, something that um, Tyler teaches a lot on boot camp, I don't do this just because I don't really have time for it, is uh, reaction time, right? And like, I'll say first when you're out at a club, is like when you see, when you make eye contact with a girl, it should be like, and just go right over there. Like before you have time to think, before anything, you're just like, I'm the caveman, I see something I want, boom, I'm going for it. And hit that before you think. And that's gonna be, and then I'll go up and be like, what are you looking at? That's a great, like, kind of opener. Like, stop staring at me. Those are my other two, like, because it's like, yeah, that shit's, like, fucking money. Um, so getting your reaction time, but it's going to be the same thing during the day, too. Like, you cross eyes and just, like, get to the habit of being, like, hi, or, some, or some, whatever it takes. I mean, everyone's personality is a little different. So maybe for that you, for you, everything's going to feel a little incongruent to start. But maybe for you, like, you make eye contact, you're like, oh, and you walk over there. Maybe for you, you feel a little more comfortable being, like, get the wave out of the way. Or smile. Maybe it's just, like, that's, that's usually a really good way to kind of start during the day because you don't need a lot. Smile, she smiles back. Okay, she's going to be pretty receptive. Boom, let's do that. And that's kind of a nice, nice little... Um, I know some of the other guys here do a lot of day game. I, I'm in New York a lot, so there is a lot of good opportunities there. But also, I just go out every night too, so I'm definitely more night game focused. But uh, I think reaction time is a huge... And, and that's where the old like three-second rule came from, right? Because guys are like, oh, shit, what I do? I don't think like three seconds is the, the magical number. It could be more, it could be less, um, but it is trying to get in there before you think too much and think too far into it.
Cool. That's a good question. Answer it? Cool. Sweet. Uh, sweet. Got time for a couple more. Yeah. Yeah. How do you cultivate, cultivate a sense of uh, entitlement? How do you get entitlement, more entitlement? Ultimately, reference points. The, the more experience you have of having success, you're going to feel more entitled. Right? So the goal is, is how to get there. Because that's, as I said, the positive feedback loop. The more experience you have. For me, I remember last year, it was like last September, I'd been, like, I was starting to get like, with a very like, high caliber of girl. And I'm like, oh, I just need like four or five more of these. And I, I can feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm like, hmm, I feel like entitled with like this level of girl. And I'm like, oh, I'm so close. And I can get there fairly, like if I pump my state up and kind of get some good momentum, I can get there somewhat consciously. But I, I could feel that I was getting really close. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoosh, you kind of push through. And like I said before, it's kind of like you hit it on different levels. Um, so using the things, the, the number one thing is momentum. Using that momentum to be like, whoosh, and know that like, know that everyone when they go out at 10 p.m., like girls too, right? Even though, girl, although I do love how like a girl will walk into the club at 10.30 and like Lady Gaga come on and she'll be like, ah, like freak out. I'm like, I wish I was that excited about anything. Much as Lady Gaga at 10.30, totally sober. But the thing is, even though that is the case, they're very receptive to like external stuff. They're still not, they're like in the logical headspace all day too. So you kind of got to get them to get some momentum going too. Um, and you realize it's like, just get in that momentum, try that out and really hit up like 10, 15 sets. And like I said before, you get that level of indifference. Going from girl zero to girl one is the, like, ugh, it's a jump in the water. But number 15 to number 16 or 20 to 21 is just going to be like, and again, because that's what the byproduct of entitlement is indifference, right? So that's what you want to try to get to is where you feel indifferent to the hotness of the girl and all that stuff. So good question. Uh, yeah, someone else? Anthony? Uh, one okay, one more. Anyone else? I got nothing. Vince in the back. Can you give an example of how you would oh, tone sorry. things down during the day? Like how you would change your tonality, maybe be like less gorilla? Yeah, well, yeah, okay, so he was talking about daytime stuff and uh, how it's different than at night. And like, what I've noticed is uh, the only thing I really calibrate, like the holistic thing that I'm calibrating based on any girl or any environment is how direct I'm going, right? And the thing is, there's probably, let's say like five, six modalities of directness. You have eye contact, you have, let's say, physicality. But the thing is, a side hug is going to be less direct than a full frontal hug. The same thing is like a, a break in rapport is going to be more, like tonality is going to be more direct than kind of a neutral tone. So based on how much stimulus is going on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, calibrate that. So the thing is, guys are like, well, can you get physical during the day? I definitely think you can get physical. But it's not going to be like, what's up, girl? Yeah. It's just like, well, that's just way uncalibrated. That's too much. But there might be time, and usually it's a lot slower, let's say half an hour, hour, two hours go by, and then you're like, haha, maybe you just hold her hand or something like that. So you can get some physicality in there. But the same thing is when you're approaching, you don't need to be as direct because you don't need to convey as much value because you're not fighting as much stimulus. So during the day, you don't need to be like, hey. It can just be like, I'll usually be just slightly below the, ne the neutral. So be like, excuse me, you're cute, what's your name? Something like that. Maybe shake their hand, although I'm 50-50 with that. Some guys are better with that. Some guys, that they go like this and she's still kind of like, uh, so sometimes it doesn't work, you know, like because she's just kind of like still frightened. And I think one of the other big things that I usually teach for day game is because uh, guys that do really well at night, they're like, oh, just something seems different during the day. I don't know what it is. I just like scare girls. And maybe that could be calibration. But the other thing is I think at the beginning, usually there's a little bit of a, there's like a little bit of like awkwardness purely because like at night she's expecting it. So during the day she's like, oh, hey, huh. And guys, like I was saying before, they're pinging off of her. So they feel that kind of awkwardness and they're like, oh my God, this is really awkward. And just to realize like as the man to kind of fight through that and be like, oh, hey, maybe you have to do a little plowing, but it's not plowing to like convey value. It's just to get her to kind of like catch her bearings and be like, oh, oh, he's talking to me. Oh, he's not stealing my purse. And like, oh, okay, cool. So that's, that's kind of like one of the big, the, the, and then the last thing I'll just say before we kind of end here is that I do feel like during the day, I feel like early on in the interaction, it never really hooks as strong as at night. Because I think at night, you have so much stimulus. So she's like, ah, and you're like, oh, this is going really well. Whereas during the day, I feel like it's always kind of tenuous at the beginning. So you're like, oh, really, you think that, blah, 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 blah. And if you stop talking, she might not initiate, even though she's enjoying it. So you have to kind of hold the conversation for a little bit longer until it really sinks up. And then you guys are like, create the bubble, basically, you know? 
Um, does that answer it, kind of? Cool, thanks. Um, yeah, so kind of ending up here, like I said, my name's Brad Branson. I have a blog, all free information, I don't sell anything, bradbranson.com, uh, Real Social Dynamics. I know Ozzy does a lot of boot camps here. I'm pretty much sold out for the next couple weeks, but I do have some in the end of July, I think, in like uh, Dublin and Munich or something like that. If you guys are interested, that's just realsocialdynamics.com. And we also have a sweet forum at rsdnation.com, but me, bradbranson.com, mine's the best. I like it, so. Uh, thanks, Anthony, for having me, and I hope you guys enjoy your weekend.